Hi, this is Mark Rosen from WCCO TV, and it's my pleasure to introduce my good friend Ron Henderson, the Fitness King, presenting Motivation, one word to help change your life. Hi, this is Ron Henderson, a.k.a. The Fitness King. I'm excited about today's show. I have an up-and-coming... <laughs> some people, you know, a lot of people know who this guy is. This is my first opportunity to meet you. I want to just say welcome to the show, Joshua. I'm glad to have you. How are you? Good. Well, Good. We're, we're here to talk about your movie. Yes, we All are. Right? You're making a movie uh, called Beta Fish. Correct. Okay. Uh, before we get into that, how did you actually... I mean, what piqued your interest... Uh, as far as movies are concerned, how young were you, and, and basically what got you interested in making movies? Um, well, I think movies have been a big part of my upbringing and family. Mm -hmm. um, the first movie I remember seeing ever is um, The Land Before Time. Oh, yeah. Yep, and then the first movie I ever saw in theaters was The Rocketeer in like 1991. I love that movie. So, yeah, it was a very middle-class American thing with seeing movies at the theater every weekend and also renting back when there was Blockbuster mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, or DVDs. Um, and at the time, I didn't know it, but I just loved seeing it. And it took a while for me to get to the point where I wanted to make my life movies. I think around the age of like 18 or 19 is where I really kind of took the plunge into the industry. So. Really? So you just said something just peaked in you and you just said... Uh, you well, this? I've always wanted to do it. I just, in high school and in middle school, I don't think I really had the courage to do it. I was a little self-conscious. Mm -hmm. But then when college came around, I went to Augsburg okay. and majored in film studies. And then around freshman year, I was like, I'm here. You know, now or never, you only live once, so then I kind of, I changed my major from business to film studies. Wow. Yep. Now, did they change your pocketbook a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I ended up having to do uh, five years as opposed to four, uh, which was a pretty penny, but mm -hmm. it was worth it so far. Okay. Was there any, I mean, I, you know, I know you talked about The Rocket, that movie, but any you get take any inspirations from anything else to any directors in particular um not until i was really old i mean you saw steven spielberg movies or mm -hmm. george lucas with jurassic park or indiana jones um i think the f i mean my mom took me to see apollo 13 which was made in 1995 i was mm -hmm. born in 89 so it was only like six and a half okay so it's a pretty adult movie i know ron howard directed that yes i think the first director that made a film that really affected me or was like that I want to do was Heat, which I saw when I was like 10. Al oh, Pacino. Yeah, yeah, in Robert De Niro. Good movie. Yeah, and that was in, um, directed by Michael Mann, so that's the first director I really resonated with. And then David Fincher kind of came along too, I really like him. Mm -hmm. Now, so. did you get supported? Were you, did your family support you, mom and dad? Uh... What's well, uh, <laughs> yes and no? They were like, oh, I don't know, because it's such a tough industry. But as is any industry, it's really competitive. I think my dad was he sort on the fence. He was like, well, if you do well, yeah, but if you don't, then no. And my mom has always been very supportive. Same with most of my family. So right. Yeah. Well, this is motivation, and it's about supporting people. Right. right? Yeah. And I tell people all the time. Go where your heart leads you. And it's not about it's not about making money. No. It's really about doing the things that you that you're passionate about. Right. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And Beta Fish has a really small budget. We're not mm -hmm. looking to use Beta Fish to become millionaires, although it wouldn't be an awful thing, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and presently, uh, if you were to pick two directors right now that you look up to, mm. who would that be? Um uh, Michael Mann for one. And then probably David Fincher. Okay, okay. But I also really like uh, Catherine Bigelow. She directed The Hurt Locker a couple yes, years ago yes, in yes, Detroit, good. and she's really good too. And I would say the two actors that I grew up really watching and really wanting to be were, uh, it's kind of funny, it was Will Smith okay. and then Jim Carrey. So yeah, and then I got into like more serious actors like, you know, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and then you start watching older movies like with Paul Newman and Steve McQueen. Right, so. right, right. Well, you got that movie look. You ever thought of moving to Hollywood? I've been you to California twice. Um, it's okay, I didn't really fit in. A lot of people were there 
to do the LA lifestyle sure. and not really act or just wanting to make good movies. They just right. didn't really want to do that. So, but I'll, maybe I'll go back. We'll right. see. Well, I, you know, I was going through your trailer for Beta Fish mm -hmm. and I, I was very impressed. Thank you. I was like, I got to find this guy. Right. <laughs> I was very impressed. And mm -hmm. when I saw that, I was like, I already figured you were already in Hollywood. Right. <laughs> right well, Great job. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> saw the trailer. And although it's only a promotional trailer right. to get the working capital oh, yes. to make the film, people at the Twin Cities Film Fest uh, Twin Cities Film Fest thought it was already done. Right. Oh yeah. And we're like, no, that's we just shot some <laughs> scenes to generate some momentum and notoriety, uh, which it, it really did. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just wrote and helped produce. I didn't shoot it. Judd Nichols and Zach Walden really helped do that, and right. they did the sound and they mm -hmm. edited and color corrected. So, right. big kudos to them. Right. So when did you first write Beta Fish? Yeah. Um, what happened was I was at. Uh, a company and it didn't work out. I didn't like it there and they didn't like me. Mm -hmm. So then I left and then another company hired me. So I had six weeks in between that. Um, so when I started Beta Fish, I was kind of like down and out, but on the rise. So I had six weeks to absolutely do nothing. I was mm -hmm. like, Josh, you really need to like do something mm -hmm. authentic or organic. And then the idea of Beta Fish was always kind of swirling around my mind but I just didn't have the time to dispose, to commit to it fully. Sure. So obviously six weeks uh, is more than enough, and if you can't get it done, then I don't think you're cut out for the business. Right. But I got pretty close. <laughs> I got, uh, in the first like two days, I got 40 pages done, mm -hmm. and then I wrote 30, and I was at 70, and generally a, a feature-length script is 90 to 120 pages. Mm -hmm. So I still had some work to go, but then I realized those other 30 pages I wrote, we would have had to have like a million dollar budget because right, there's right. death, explosions. So then what I did is to overcome writer's block and to get from like point A to point um, B was to write the budget for the amount of money that we could work with mm -hmm. to help write it. Cause it's like, oh, you can't write that, but you can do this. So I did right. that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, summer rolled around, and this was in 2016. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then it got put on hold. I was at like 60 pages. Mm -hmm. okay. And then like, six months went by. Um, I didn't have anything really going. And then I went back and looked at it like it, re 20, so I really was at 40 again. Okay. <laughs> and then I broke up with my girlfriend. I should okay. say we broke up, so I had some time back. Uh, sometimes you need to be isolated to get work right. done as a writer. And then I was able to finish it, and then I sent it to uh, one of the heads at the Twin Cities Film Festival. He liked it, and then they hosted it for a public reading the next year. So really it took a full 13 months wow. to get the full draft done. And even now, some of the people are like, well, let's kind of change this and that. So it's mm -hmm. not... It's done, but you know, there's always a potential. Reason, sure. Right? So. And Joshua, how did you come up with the name Beta Fish? Right. So, um, Beta Fish is supposed to be like so Siamese fighting fish. They okay. fight one another. Okay. There only can be kind of one, so it's kind of like that dominant alpha mm -hmm. um, persona. And it was kind of inspired by a book and a movie called Rumblefish. Yeah. By mm -hmm. S.E. Hinton, and the movie is directed by Francis Ford Coppola, and it stars Matt Dillon and Mickey Rourke. Mm -hmm. And that's how fish f kind of fight. It's kind of more of a, a macho, kind of masculine right. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of used that to inspire the relationship between two of the characters, Arthur and Danny, and their family dynamic. Mm -hmm. But also, mm -hmm. you know, beta fish, if there's two in one fish bowl, there only can be one. Right. Kind of the, so they're going to fight. So that kind of is the, um, the antagonist or villain, if you will, Alex. She gives a speech about Beta Fish, and that kind of uh, helps personify the title and the mood and the um, style of the film. Okay. What makes your cast unique in this? And, I, and I'm saying that because I heard that you have a girl that I know, Ava Justin, yeah. in your movie, and yeah. she's really, really good. I work with her. She's a star, yeah. She is, yeah. Uh -huh. So you, you got some good talent there. We do, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So what else makes you, besides having somebody like that who goes all over, mm -hmm. what, what makes your cast really unique? Um, I think it's just having a lot of people who are very committed and driven, mm -hmm. but also that I wanted 
in between those jobs, I was reading a lot of articles that, that there's a lot of uh, injustice for women in film. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to write and have more of a diverse ethnic cast, but also having more like equality. Right. And people from different communities, such as um, the LGBT community mm -hmm. or uh, actors or actresses from other minority groups. And I just wanted to have a more eclectic, interesting cast, I think. Mm -hmm. And why? When you say these other groups, why? Um, when most people don't see really, care. Yeah, I was just sick of seeing a bunch of white people. Okay. At movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just kind of see it. And like, when you're young, you kind of get used to it. But after a while, it's like, I've seen this, I don't care, it's just a bunch of, not like white people are right, bad, sure, don't sure, get me sure, wrong, sure, but sure. It, it just, I think it's, it's better for the film, it's better for the industry, and it's better for the film to have a more diverse, unique cast. Right. So. I agree, and it's, it's funny, because last night, watching news, I told my wife, I said, mm -hmm. uh, I wish there were more minorities even on the news and stuff like that, because mm -hmm. it bothers me, because you very seldom see an African-American guy on TV, mm -hmm. on a regular TV show, Channel 9, Channel 11, right. as far as, being the anchor, you'll see occasional to have a few African American women right. or something, mm -hmm. you know. But for I a agree. place that is diverse as Minnesota, I'm surprised that you don't see more. Right, Minnesota is a very diverse state in community, and I think right. that's why I really want to shoot Beta mm -hmm. Fish in St. Paul, Minneapolis, Twin right. Cities area. So, yes. good. So, any other name people that you have on your? Yeah, uh, Megan Mack will, um, or Megan Mack from Minnesota will be playing Alex. Ava Justin plays right. Lisa right. Bishop. Uh, Mike Breeden plays Arthur Bishop. Um, Gilbert, if I pronounce it right, Asuncion, plays the jazz boss. Okay. Uh, Brent Myrad plays uh, Frank. And then there's a few other major minor roles that we still need to cast. Actually, okay. So. And if you were to break it down, let's say in three minutes, if, if that's not too quick to do that, mm -hmm. what is the movie about? Then I'm going to get more into some details. Right. It's about a lot of things. I know uh, our cinematographer, Judd Nichols, has described it as a genreless genre film, which is kind of a wacky okay. way to describe it. But really, if you see a movie like uh, Pulp Fiction, it's kind of got right. a lot of um, elements and styles and genres put together. So it is difficult to articulate, other than that, we like to describe it as a neo-noir film. It's more of a future mystery crime thriller. Um, it has uh, dynamic of family, uh, equality, um, death, gambling, mm -hmm. um, kind of like that pulp noir feel. Um, that's really the genre I think that best mm -hmm. um, encompasses it as, a, as an umbrella. And mm -hmm. under that are other genres because there are some very uh, funny parts, some very dark comedy. Um, in the trailer, you see, I, I don't know why, but people like to see me get hit in the face. Every mm. time they see that part, people Well, that's because you're the star, right? <laughs> yeah, you're I know. So you're directing it and you're starring in it? No, I'm not directing it. Okay, you're not. Okay. No, I, but I'm, you wrote it, but you are starring in it. Yeah, so I'm just producer, okay. writer, actor. Okay, um, so you didn't do the Sylvester Sloan thing, right? No, so no, no, I'm not. But no. close, right? <laughs> I don't think I could ever truly bring myself to do that. I think... Um, Warren Beatty or Robert Redford, I think, did it well that they kind of could direct themselves, sure. or Clint Eastwood, mm -hmm. or even um, Denzel did really good in right. Fences. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm just, I couldn't do it. I know Warren Beatty generally did not want to direct himself, he just couldn't right. find a director that he yep. felt it, could yep. do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, interesting. Mm -hmm. Good. So, a lot of movies have been made, or people are trying to right now in the right. Twin Cities. How will your how do you think your movie will actually benefit people, in, you know, in the Twin Cities? I think it'll, it's good because um, filmmaking is a great thing for the state, also fiscally and financially. Mm -hmm. um, it, it creates a lot of jobs, networking opportunities that can stem to more work and more jobs. It can raise the economy. It's obviously eco-friendly. We're not harming sure. the environment. Sure. Yep, yep, and the yep. other thing is, too, is that it does showcase Mm -hmm. businesses, areas, and it, be, it kind of becomes like a symbolic thing where it creates tourism. Sure. And a big example that I know a representative from the state said that uh, if you've ever seen the movie uh, Field of Dreams. Of course, yes. That baseball field is still there in Iowa, mm -hmm. and that state and even that town really benefits because that's a huge tourist attraction, oh, yeah. so people will go there. Now, I'm not saying beta fish can do that, but it mm -hmm. does help to uh, establish an identity for the Twin Cities, right. um, obviously when you think of Minnesota film, 
fortunately and personally, I feel unfortunately, you think of Fargo. Right. And I think that's something we need to move past. Now, is Beta Fish the film to do that? Could be. Uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, it does help just to boost a lot of things. There is no negative or drawback to uh, making films in Minnesota. So. Okay. Are there any scenes in particular that you're looking forward to maybe shooting? Yeah, I think the climax and the big finale, uh, we did shoot scenes in the St. Paul Athletic Club. Mm -hmm. uh, they were very gracious to us. Uh, they were like, you could just come shoot and use the space. Really? Yeah. The, the money place, they did that for you. That's, that's cool. Yeah, uh, St. Paul Athletic Club, yeah. Um, and the building, I think, is 100 years old mm -hmm. this year. So it's quite the building that has a very unique kind of cold, uh, decadent look that's very uh, rich. It mm -hmm. kind of, a lot of people when we were shooting there, it reminded them of the building and The Shining. Right, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so, I would yeah. agree, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Saw the movie 10 times, I think. Yeah. yeah, so there's the big ballroom we shot scenes in, and mm -hmm. uh, there are bars, and the, just the lighting, and the floor, and the feel of that area mm -hmm. is wonderful. So Is that we, hard to light in that place like it, it actually? It wasn't, it wasn't. Um, in the ballroom, they have t really two big chandeliers that helped. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a lighting expert. I wish Judd was here. He could have said the lighting was easy. I think we kind of shot it on the fly. Right. It was a very mm -hmm. improvisational shoot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it went well because everyone thinks the movie's done. It's not. Yes, um, yes, yes. So I think lighting overall in that area was pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So. Interesting. Yeah, but we got to shoot there. That mm -hmm. could be a good area to shoot the climax. Cause that's where the big finale is. It's a huge party mm -hmm. of like the elite criminal underworld there. So. Okay. All right. Right. <laughs> you want any spoilers to let out? No. no. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> Maybe later. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how can people? I mean, I, I'm assuming if you're shooting a movie here, you guys, you're gonna be using extras, etc. Yeah. <clears throat> and and also I know you need funding. How does it work from standpoint of if people are interested, in maybe seeing if they could participate in your movie? How do they go about that? That's a good question. Um, what, well, right now we're doing the Indiegogo campaign. We actually, we will approach the, it's a 60 day campaign. We'll be at 30 more days mm -hmm. on Wednesday or Thursday of this week. I'd have to check. So right now um, we're about 38% to go with okay. another month to go. So we're doing okay so far, still mm -hmm. a long ways to go. So if you want to get involved, um, you can just reach us at our website, uh, Betafish Film, okay. and then just shoot us an email. Betafishfilm.com, is that yep. where you go? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Uh, or just look us up on Facebook, Betafish Film, like us, okay. uh, do that. Check out the, the Betafish Indiegogo campaign, you can do that as well. Okay. Make a pledge or a donation. There are two um, extra extras uh, that have roles that actually have speaking parts so we actually opened that up for mm -hmm. a donation so mm -hmm. if you were to make a donation for the amount that we're asking for the perk you would actually be in the film and have lines. Right. Tell the folks at home what's the what's the hotel? Yeah you would get to be mm -hmm. a car dealer because uh, in the end there's a big uh, finale it's a big poker tournament and you could actually have solid five to ten minutes of screen time and have three lines so pretty simple, but nonetheless, you get to be in a film, and you know you can go to your local theater and potentially see yourself on film. So, For five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. And, and yeah. you're helping to get a, a Minneapolis movie. Yeah, that's uh, correct. Produce. Yeah. So that's that. Other than that, I think we will be needing extras. Um, definitely for the climax of the St. Paul Athletic mm -hmm. Club. So. Okay. And so what's next for you, <clears throat> Joshua? Well, we still. Have 30 days to run the campaign. Uh, we'll have some other events coming up. Uh, we can keep you posted on. I think we'll be doing um, kind of a brunch on with some other agencies in town to help promote it. I think the campaign will end December uh, 15th, 16th, or 17th in December. Right, okay. And then we went, uh, a lot of the cast and crews kind of expressed their feelings of not shooting in January because okay, yeah. <laughs> it's cold. No, so, yeah. And or even in February, some of the actors are busy, and you don't want to shoot right after the holidays because it's kind of a kind of a holiday hangover, and yeah. it's cold, and people are kind of still. in it's the new year, so we wouldn't shoot till spring, so mm -hmm. most likely April, May, maybe March. Um, most people who donate to the campaign will be getting their 
uh, rewards or perks that they've chosen February, March. Right. And a lot of things too, just for continuity of shooting. So say for example, we shoot a scene outside and it snows. Right, exactly. And then we have to go back and do a reshoot and all the snow melts right, that yeah. can cause uh, quite a dilemma. So it's just best to forgo the snow. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then negative, you know, 20 degrees we right. endure here. Yeah. A lot, of, it seems like a lot, a lot of work. Lot it of is work. a lot of work. It's it's what you make of it. So the thing with um, Francis Ford Coppola once said, who directed Godfather, mm -hmm. the best thing about filmmaking is that it's a collaborative art form. Sure. The worst thing about filmmaking that it's is that it's a collaborative yeah. art form. So mm -hmm. it's just working with people who um, have a very unique vision, are diplomatic and very team oriented, but understand the hierarchy exactly, of the exactly, order. Exactly. Uh, but also just want to be a part of something grand and right. new. So that's the good thing with working with non union actors. Right. Um, they're just very hard working and oh, they're yeah. flexible and they just want to do good acting. The mm -hmm. same thing goes with any kind of director or crew. Now, it sounds, Josh, Josh, it sounds like you have a good team. Mm -hmm. And I say this because if I go out and eat, I'm like really picky about my food not being done right. Mm -hmm. And some people think, oh, you're hard to work. No, you know what? I, I've done probably three shows for HGTV. I've done two or three military films. Okay. I've done different, you know, like ads for different places. And people have said, I'm one of the easiest people to work with. Do you know why? Because whatever you tell me to do, I do. <laughs> I don't have to do it. <laughs> right. yeah. and, and some people actually do. They get on the screen, it's all about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's you know. not, I'm not like that. I just want everything to be fair and equal and be right. Right. Which is easier said than done, though. So. Right. Now, i got to ask you this. How did you get Ava on your film? Because so, she's very popular. Yeah, I met Ava. <laughs> Ava Justin. When I first was writing the script, I wanted to have a very... Um, the diversity you were talking about? Diverse, but also stronger characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was at a networking event for actors and actresses, and it was kind of a smaller, not a lot of people showed up. Yep. So I'm just sitting on the couch. Mm -hmm. Having a cocktail and then looking like a Hollywood star. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then come on. I saw Ava and her mom come in, mm -hmm. um, Judy, and I was kind of sitting there. And then Ava looked at me and she came up to me and she said, "Hi, I'm Ava Joss." I go, oh, "Hello." And she had a very so like, you know who she was. I, that's when I met her. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then she was very uh, just professional and mm -hmm. adult and oh, yeah. very wise behind wise beyond <laughs> her years. And you would think she had been doing it for 30 years mm. and it w obviously wasn't the case because I think at the time she was maybe 10 or 11 mm -hmm. and then I go that's who I need for Lisa Bishop who mm -hmm. I already kind of had in my head but it's like well how are you going to find a character like that sure. Josh like you're going to have to do a huge scout and that's going to cost money and sure. the chances are so rare yes. and then I met Ava I'm like oh my god like the universe has opened up there's this great actress mm -hmm. so I said that's it and then I uh, met with Bill Cooper I'm like I've got these these actors I want Yep. Let's get him, and he really helped to... But how did you get Ava? He stood and told me. Yeah, I was so getting that. So he, he has done um, audition tapes for Ava, and then he was like, you know, I'll email them, and I'll see if I can arrange it, and right. he did, and then she really liked the character mm -hmm. of Lisa, and she liked the story, and I think her mom did too, and then right. it kind of snowballed, and she was at the public reading. Uh, everyone adored Ava oh, yeah, more course, than anyone course, else. and then. <laughs> she, came, she came in, she rocked the reading, she's like, Josh, you gotta go. I was like, all right, bye. And then everyone's like, how did you find her? I'm like, right. Ava found me, I didn't find right. her. So that's kind of how that that's happened. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Last question before we end. Mm -hmm. uh, you're trying to raise a total of how much exactly? The goal for um, Indiegogo is 25000 and we're at 9440 okay. If you don't day. raise all of it, how does that work? Because I know Seed and Spark, all these different... Right, right. So um, guys we will, it's flexible funding, yeah. so we'll still get the amount of money we've raised. Mm -hmm. uh, we can still get fiscal spon sponsorship, mm -hmm. and there's also uh, investors or angel investors who can mm -hmm. back us as well. And in addition, there's also the option of um, grants through, right. through the state and the arts. Right, good, good job. Folks, so. Ron Henderson, a.k.a. The Fitness King, with my guest, the one and only Joshua Angaretti. He is the, the writer. And I call it the star, but he's in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Beta Fish. It's been a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank, Thank you. you for coming on. You're welcome. Great job. Thank Folks, you. again, if you want to get involved, just make sure you look at the credits. I'm going to have all that information down how you can either possibly be, be on this show or you can also get involved by helping to make this movie a success by contributing to Beta Fish, the film. We're going to see you next time on Motivation and all that you do. Stay fit, stay blessed, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, man. Thank you. Hi, 
I'm Josh Wongaretti, the writer and producer of Beta Fish. Beta Fish is a neo-noir film that centers on two characters, one being Danny Bishop, who is a mischievous, manipulative gambler and also prodigy when it comes to being a con artist. He owes a very large debt to Alex because she protected him while he was in prison. Alex is a malicious mob boss queen of the city who is bent on the destruction of Danny. Now, this puts him on a collision course, one versus the other. Uh, Alex threatens Danny to pay this debt or she will kill his family. And we'll see who wins in this battle. So, without further ado, I give you the Beta Fish trailer. Hi, I'm Bob Wilbanks from Ambassadors for Business, here today with the Motivational Minute. I'd like to have you focus on a word for a moment. Yoke. Yoke. You know, for years, I thought that when Christ said, take on my yoke for my burden is light, it meant that he'd be dragging me around. And I resisted that because I'm a type A type person. You know, I, I want to go out there, get things done, put it on my back, I crash through those walls, make things happen. Well, it turns out, as I start to study the yoke, that it's a, it's a, it's a uh, contraption that helps you share a burden. It helps you carry more. So when you become yoked with Christ, you increase the amount of burden that you can actually carry. It's pretty awesome when you start to think about what the yoke really does. Clydesdale horses typically can pull about 8,000 pounds, but you hook two of them together, they end up pulling 24,000 pounds. The big thing, though, is if you get intimate in your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you do that, just like the Clydesdales, when they train together, they, they can now pull 32,000 pounds, four times as much as they could have done alone. Develop that intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Take on his yoke, for his burden is light, and there you will find peace.